All right, y'all. Welcome back to the Second Floor Podcast. It's your boy Cassius. I'm with uh, the main man today, special guest Conch. Welcome, brother. Welcome to the studio. Thanks for having me, bro. I'm happy to be here. Appreciate you coming on. We actually haven't had an artist for a long time. I think our first, like our first season, we had two artists, mm-hmm. and that was it. And okay. then for another two and a half, three years, we yeah. didn't have. So I'm I'm excited for this conversation. Right on. So it's an honor then if I'm if I'm gracing the the podcast as one of the first artists in a while. 2023, we're bringing on artists, man. This is That's obviously it. yeah. This is this is nice, man. Um. Yeah, let's talk. Let's 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 take it back a little bit because I know you and I are artists, and um, I want to kind of know more about kind of your backstory a little bit. Mm-hmm. How you got into music? Yeah, where did it all start for you? Mm-hmm. Um, just as a kid, I was always such a music fan, and and my dad really was a music fan in the house too. And both my parents were playing music all the time, and it was just always something that I was really interested in. And so. Um, I would like write songs and we'd record them on this little tape recorder even when I was a little kid. Um, And then from there, you know, took drum lessons, took guitar lessons, had a couple bands in junior high and stuff. I was really into like classic rock and all that. And then um, as I started going into high school, I got into hip hop and I got into making beats on GarageBand. Mm. So that was kind of my start. I was always like the rapper producer combo from the beginning, Um, just making beats and I didn't know anyone who rapped. So. I rapped on them, <laughs> yeah. and um, yeah, I just kind of fell in love with the whole process, and that was my creative outlet. And from then, I just you know started playing shows and releasing tracks. And now I'm I'm doing a lot more singing um, than I am rapping, but uh, that's kind of been my my journey from the creative side of things. No, oh, that's dope, man. And you know, you talk about that creative outlet. Was it you know? you know you finish school and you're 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 into the lab like working like how how did how was it like you know in the early days were you just like experimenting trying different things or were you you know taking an influence from other other people other places or, or what? yeah absolutely it was a lot of time on my own actually when i was starting out a lot of my friends weren't into making music um or they didn't uh they didn't have the interest but i would just be kind of by myself in my room Um, on the laptop cooking up and trying a whole bunch of different stuff and and I was working on everything like mostly I was rapping and that was the stuff that I would release but I was trying to make electronic music I was trying to make rock music so it was a lot of experimentation and uh, a lot of time by myself but um, it would get lonely right like in the bedroom just cooking up so I would always be bringing my friends over whether just to like hang out while I worked or sometimes they'd like okay let me get a verse like let me try this out yeah Um, so I had that aspect of it later on but yeah a lot of time alone did you uh, you know in terms of like just you know the rapping and you know obviously the singing and stuff did you uh, learn it all on your own like just from straight the passion and the interest did you take any courses or lessons or anything like that growing up um i took drum lessons and guitar lessons i think just for like a couple years maybe in the sixth and seventh grade and that was kind of my only formal training everything else from that was self-taught and i always say i went to youtube university because i was just uh on youtube watching tutorial after tutorial and now there's so much great stuff on there but back then there wasn't the amount of content that there is now as far as like how to make beats, how to do stuff like that. Um, So a lot of time would just be digging, trying to find a good video to show me what I wanted to learn. And then I would just, you know, I was so um, obsessed with it that I, you know, I'd watch a video for 10, 20 seconds, pause it, try to do it myself, that kind of thing. And it was just this obsession of of learning how to do what I wanted. It's funny, man, you say that because even we in the video space and same thing with the rapping, I did the same thing Mm -hmm. growing up, uh, you know, getting into the videos and like hopping on YouTube, trying to find that one thing that could help me figure out what I was trying to do. So Mm -hmm. totally relate to that, man. Um, Talk to me about like the kind of the motivation of actually like creating or maybe the confidence. Did that confidence come from kind of your your family of like being able to because I feel like, you know, some artists um you know who maybe want to get you know put music out there and that's something that a lot of artists have struggles with is like Mm -hmm. i'm not good enough uh my music isn't good enough let me just keep all the music in the hard drive maybe one day when i make that single that i think is like yeah gonna go viral or whatever Mm -hmm. Uh, talk to me about that was it did you always have the thing of like you know what i'm cool with what i make i put myself out there you know it's all good or did you just or for those first years were you just cooking up and just keeping it to yourself and your friends 
I was always trying to share what I was doing. Um, I was super blessed to have very supportive parents, and they always encouraged me, and they told me, you know, just, you know, if, if this is what you like to do, do it. And, and they were so supportive, and I got a lot of positive feedback from them. You know, if they hear me practicing or they hear me trying to make something, I was always encouraged, which I think is super rare, um, especially in music. Like, not a lot of people have parents who would see that as something viable for them to spend their time doing. Right. Um, and so I was super lucky with that and always was encouraged. And so I was always looking forward to showing my work because I knew I would get a positive reception to it, at least from my parents, you know, like yeah. my mom would be my fan or my dad would be my fan. Yeah. Um, and then as I got older, like getting into high school and stuff, it was almost like a party trick um, was how I got comfortable sharing my stuff. Like I'd make like a funny song or I'd like rap at a party or I'd like, you know what I mean? No one else was doing it. I think right. now a lot more kids are making beats and rapping and releasing music at that age. Yeah. But at least in Edmonton, and in my kind of circle, I was probably the only one who was doing that at that point. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of this party trick that I had. Um, so I could kind of hide behind that, right? right? It wasn't it wasn't like this big serious thing. It was just for fun. Right. And then right. as you know, as I continued, then it was more serious releases and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So talk to me about the you know when when did you decide that okay, like I want to give this a little bit of a shot and take it more seriously versus like you know, the party trick or just like experimenting. Mm -hmm. When, when was that shift? I think, um, I think I knew I wanted to at least have a go at making a career out of it coming out of high school. Um, I had been doing that all through high school and I just didn't really see myself doing anything else. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't want to go to university. I didn't want to go to college to, uh, you know, pursue something because I knew that really what I wanted to do was make music. Yeah. Um, and so after high school it was kind of like well if i'm not you know if i'm not taking the pursuit of a career another career seriously then this has to be serious yeah and so from there that was kind of the turning point okay so there wasn't like there wasn't a moment where you're thinking of like getting into like i don't know biology or like something of that nature uh in school never too seriously like i had things that i thought okay well maybe i can do that if this doesn't work or whatever but i kind of always just felt like i was going to do this and i did um so yeah, yeah that was kind of my pursuit right right yeah it's interesting man because i feel like especially in that time around high school um high school university that's when you know kids have to make a decision mm -hmm. about like well, i gotta make a decision what i want to do with my life yeah and sometimes especially that young you don't know what the answer is absolutely right you don't know like oh i'm gonna be this or that and, and obviously things change and mm -hmm. and you know, personally for me, I had, you know, my, my parents are conservative, you know, Muslim parents. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I didn't know what I wanted to do outside of like out, uh, fin finishing high school. And they basically influenced me to go into, you like, they basically were like, you got to go, you know, the Brown immigrant mentality of like, sure. you're not like just not doing nothing. You mm -hmm. can't just like spend that time to figure it out. You right. have to go to school. Yeah, so no gap year, no gap year. Yeah. And I, it's funny cause I took a semester off mm -hmm. and my dad was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, what are you, he lost his mind and yeah. then I had to go back in. So, and then as I was in uni yeah. and I was figuring myself out sure. at that time and, and also the same thing, like building my confidence in, in, in my own sort of dreams and goals and things like that. So, mm -hmm. um, were you releasing music uh, from from the from the get? Like, were you when you were making beats? Were you you know posting online? Were you marketing yourself and branding yourself at that time, or was it just like I'm just throwing this up on SoundCloud? You know the SoundCloud days, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I was definitely on SoundCloud, but um, I would put stuff up on YouTube. I actually made like some physical mixtapes and like tried to sell those. No way! Oh, yeah. so you got CDs and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I was just kind of having fun with it, like at that point. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, I think there was kind of a, a gap period between where I was just putting stuff on SoundCloud. Uh, and YouTube and then Spotify started to get popular and all that and so I started releasing my music on there and, and trying to do that yeah um, and you know just try to come off as professional as possible right that like if there was somewhere new where you could listen to music I wanted my stuff to be available there uh, absolutely and uh, you know a lot of artists I wouldn't say a lot but you know some of us sometimes you know lose that motivation after mm -hmm. dropping 
certain singles you know we've put in all this effort yeah you know like my first track i, I like the music video it took me like three and a half months to make because sure. i made it myself and yeah and i was like oh this is gonna be it right mm -hmm. like my first single yeah yeah it's gonna you know i'm gonna go viral it's gonna like get mm -hmm. so much great reception but and then it doesn't yeah. right for you have you ever were you ever caught up with like your numbers or like your stats like when you drop something on spotify or mm -hmm. instagram or tiktok whatever yeah did it ever influence you in your space? Did it ever get into your head? Because I know it got in to, at a certain point for me. Yeah. I was caught up in like, oh man, why did this get like fifty views? Like I spent so much, so many hours on this on this single. Yeah. So yeah, talk to me about that. Absolutely. Um, and that's even something that I'm still working on and trying not to worry about too much. But um, always, I you know from the very first thing that. I released I wanted people to see it I wanted to share and, and see their reaction and that was always part of it for me um, as you know as obsessed as I am with the craft and making it and you get so much out of that you get more out of that definitely um, I wanted to get a reaction and I wanted to you know have people take notice and so um, numbers and stuff were definitely something that has you know motivated me but also been a great source of like disappointment exactly like you said I've got you know a song that I think is gonna be so great and so big and I put it out it doesn't get the reaction that I want it's like a crushing feeling but never to the point where I felt like I'm not gonna try again you know what I mean like you'd take that you know day or two of oh man this doesn't seem to be getting the the momentum that I thought it would right and then you just say okay well next time how can I prepare myself so that it does right because I believe that anything that you make there's an audience for it um, and so I've never tried to like make a radio song or make a whatever song. I always just wanted to make what I liked. And I thought, you know, if I'm properly prepared, I can promote this. There are people out there who will like this. I just have to get to them. Yeah. Um, so it was more, more motivating than, uh, soul crushing on a little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you, man. Cause I, I know same thing is like you put in that time, that effort and you want, you don't want the world to see this. Yeah. And um, actually, that was one of my main motivations getting into video production mm -hmm. was um, I, making my first single. I was like, oh, damn, like I need some visuals for this. Like I need yeah. I need to make a music video. And, and at the time, that, that those were the thing. Yeah. Um, and that was what motivated me to learn how to do video and, mm -hmm. and how to. And, and then I found a passion through through that and like making and creating through video. Yeah. Um, what uh, yeah. what time is this? Like, what year is this that you're putting your first single out? Oh man, first single came out 2014, mm -hmm. but I was working on music 2009, 2010. Yeah, and yeah. so yeah, it's I just like that you said the music video was the thing then because it totally was right. Yeah, like, you and I are kind of at this similar time where we're so influenced by guys like Mac Miller, Logic, Odd Future, like they're really using YouTube. Yeah, through like 2010 to 2013. Like YouTube becomes this super um, viable option for artists to start a career by putting music videos out, full Dat length Piff. video, Dat Piff, yeah. yeah, long form content. It was so crazy, right? It was. You man. had to have a music video. Yeah. And now we're seeing like you don't even necessarily want a full length video. No. You might want like eight or ten little ten second clips that look like a music video that's right man it's crazy how it's evolved man like i i, I it, it's insane to see even guys like you know you'll see guys now who will have like a million followers on tiktok mm -hmm. or even instagram now and you won't even know who they are mm -hmm. in, in 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 the hip-hop space and you're yeah. like what like yeah. that's insane mm -hmm. like because if you know if we were blowing up on youtube people would take notice yeah at that time mm -hmm. now i feel like with all these platforms and obviously artists having a little bit more um you know you, you know every, everyone has a cell phone in their pocket and, yeah. and you can make videos mm -hmm. and the attention span it's 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 i feel like the landscape is harder to stand out mm -hmm. but i feel like it's also it's also easier to build an audience not easier in a sense but like easier in terms of like the entry point of being able to yeah in a sense well yeah and i think it loops back to that thing i was talking about how there's an audience for whatever it is you make and that aligns with what you said there might be an artist on tiktok who has a million followers and you and i have never heard of them um and we don't ever need to hear of them for them to make a career out of it, right? You don't have to go through these old conduits anymore, right? You don't have to be at the Grammys. You don't have to be on the cover of Complex. You don't have to all that stuff. You can just build an audience for people who like 
what you do, um, which is really cool. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, it's very saturated. So, you yeah. Know. Great stories are timeless. To be a great storyteller, one must bridge the gap between an alluring narrative and the audience, to pull with the heartstrings, and to shape the imagination. At Q Films Media, we're more than just a media production agency. We are a powerhouse of creative individuals, content creators, who specialize in telling great stories. Stories that are intimate and kept closest to the heart. Stories that are powerful and inspiring, that spark boldness and action. We are Q Films Media. We're here to tell your story. We are always unseen. And it's it's funny because um, the evolution of, of of just marketing mm -hmm. your music, how, how that's changed so much since our days from twenty you know two thousand eight two thousand nine till now, mm -hmm. just seeing it. And I've always been one to to kind of study the game and just study guys, even even the guys that are independent, like mm -hmm. guys like Russ or you know Logic for a long time. Yeah, and the amount of you know the amount of con like the amount of music they've made and and kind of the moves that they've made but also seeing these kind of guys that are up and coming now who are like you know there's a guy from Toronto called Con uh, his name's Connor Price yeah yeah I, know I don't him. know if you know Connor yeah mm -hmm. and it's like his the way he markets his videos on TikTok and Instagram mm -hmm. genius oh like, absolutely at, like I'm like wow like how it's changed so much to a point where it's like I gotta catch your attention in five seconds mm -hmm. five ten seconds yeah. and um, and being able to blow up a song mm -hmm. from a 30 second video is insane to me yeah it's crazy and and he's a great example because I've not listened to his music on Spotify or downloaded his albums but I know a bunch of his songs from TikTok and from his videos and stuff and he's more of like a a complete entertainer than just a musician, right. um, which you sort of have to be now. Yeah, yeah. You and 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 the idea of you know being able to have this holistic piece of like you might have like the greatest songs, mm -hmm. right, that are just stashed in your hard drive or your SoundCloud or your or your Spotify. Yeah, but it might not just be the music itself. It's mm -hmm. about the marketing and how you put yourself out there and being creative in order to get it to that audience, yeah. the audience that you want. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I've had to learn that quite a bit because for me, the the TikTok stuff and the Instagram, like five second, 10 second, 20 mm -hmm. second videos, they don't come naturally to me yeah. because I was always naturally like, all right, I make a single, I make something, okay, let's make a music video for this. Like there's my process. Yeah. But now that's completely shattered, right? Mm -hmm. Like you don't need a music video to, you. Maybe you need a five second video that you're just rapping in in a car or walking and, and rapping or whatever. And yeah. it's trying to get my mind wrapped around that is is a little different and trying to evolve. Yeah, it's so interesting. It's like the uh, the anticipation and the kind of virality is that is that a word? Virality of a piece of yeah. art um, <laughs> will now take place before the song ever comes out. Yeah. Or even major label artists will drop an album and they won't have a video with it and they'll wait to see, you know, okay, two weeks later, what's the most popular song from the album? Okay, let's do a video for that song because mm -hmm. that's the one people like the most. Let's pour a little gas on the flame. Um, whereas before you'd have like a six or a nine month rollout. It was this whole story and narrative. Yeah. The first video, there was skits, there was like vlogs, there was all this, right? Which I loved, but now it's almost opposite. The music is just like, this kind of middle point, right? You hype everything up, the music drops, and then you see what happens after that, and that's the way you go. Yeah. It's, it's so crazy. It's crazy. And, you know, talking about even, like, in on SoundCloud, you mm -hmm. know how, like, the first song would always get the most plays, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. then you would see the decrease in, mm -hmm. like, you're like, you know? So, I don't know, man. It's it's interesting now that the landscape has changed. And, 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 and for you, do you find do you find that you're evolving with, with, with that? Like, in terms of making short form content, do you feel like 
you know, I'm thinking about this now because, like, you know, a lot of artists will go to, like, places like Vancouver or mm-hmm. bigger cities or yeah, I, I need to go to L.A. or I need to go to these. Like, I need to hop on a record label to yeah, yeah. to make myself into, make this career for myself. Mm-hmm. What do you feel, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that today? Um, I think it's still important, actually. I think there's kind of just another path now. So I think like if you want to go, let's call it the industry route and you want to pursue a record deal um, with a major label or another kind of label, um, there it's still important to be in those rooms, meet those people face to face because, you know, if someone can put a name to your face or your face to your name and they can do something for you, right? More so than on the internet and internet interactions, you know, are always less powerful i feel like if i meet you in a room and i play you my song and i'm you know watching you as you react to it you're gonna remember that right as opposed to if i just send you a link you might not even open it um so if you want to go the industry route i think it's still important to be in those places where the industry is because the music industry is not in edmonton it's in those cities that you mentioned absolutely um if you want to do that but you have this other option now where you don't have to do that and you can be more almost like a content creator on that side of things, right? Um, and I don't know that one is better than the other. I mean, the industry route's kind of the old way, but we've got this exciting new way now, right? Yeah. And it's uh, like a TikTok artist might not go to the Grammys. I mean, it's changing now, right? You're seeing that start to happen. Sure, yeah. Um, but uh, it's strange. Yeah, you're either kind of this like industry artist or this content creator kind of artist where you're kind of... It's almost more like a, a small business, or well, depending on of the course. size of your audience. Yeah, what do you what do you think of the um, what do you think of the the, the uh, music industry here in Edmonton, or I, I'm not industry, but just the scene? Yeah, itself. It's uh, it's actually having a lot of growth, and there's some really cool artists here who are doing a lot of great stuff. I think. Um, you know, there was always like a folk scene here, and I think there's always been a pretty big metal scene and kind of hardcore scene here. But now, like, we're seeing a lot of cool pop stuff, lots of great R&B and hip hop stuff is starting to come out, which is really cool. Um, and I'm super excited about it. I think when I was first doing shows and releasing stuff, there was not a ton of artists from Edmonton that I wanted to listen to. Mm-hmm. And now I'm listening to local acts all the time, mm. which is really great. I mean, there's not really much music seen infrastructure here yet but i feel like the the talent is is starting to you know show itself yeah absolutely i i I totally agree with you man there's a lot of a lot of guys who are guys girls artists who are here um not even just in the music space i feel like just in the 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 creative Mm -hmm. art space in general that are just like diamonds in the rough if you will yeah like they're so dope but they don't they're not shining at that Mm -hmm. like level of you know fame or whatever or celebrity status but a lot of uh and and that's what you know when we started this podcast for for that reason as well mm-hmm. is to put people that we think are doing some dope things in the city yeah to just kind of even give them a little bit of a spotlight mm-hmm. talk to them kind of understand their story yeah dig a little deeper than just like mm-hmm. oh this is your art or this is your music and that's that's it Absolutely. you know what i mean so um no that's dope man uh I want to get into your your musical process. Mm-hmm. Uh, get back to kind of kind of the music stuff. Um, what what do you use when you uh, like? How is your process work while you're while you're cooking up something? Whether it's beats or whether it's mm-hmm. lyrics or, or or whether it's a song. What's what's kind of that process look like for you? Yeah, I used to write first, and then I would either you know try to produce something for myself to put those lyrics on top of, or I'd go look for a beat on YouTube or whatever. Um, and now I almost never will write first. It's always the music first for me now. Um, just because I spend most of my day producing. So that's where it comes naturally to me. Right. Um, so I'll play some chords or I'll grab the guitar and and try and find a riff or I'll start with a drum pattern. And then from there, once I've got something that I like, it might take me two or three tries and you've been in the studio with me. You've seen me kind of like throw some paint at the wall and see what sticks or whatever um and so you know i'll try two or three things and once i've got something that's really resonating with me then i'll start to try and find a pocket whether it's a rhythm for my voice or a melody just kind of humming mumbling doing kind of like uh like a scat almost to try and and get it down i'll have my phone out to take like voice notes of that kind of stuff and then after that i put the lyrics to it Mm. um so yeah it's always kind of 
music up for me. Um, but I still will, like, if something pops into my head where I'm like, oh, that's a cool word, or that could be a neat lyric, or, you know, that might look good on an album, or I'll write that down in my phone notes, yeah. and then I'll use that as, like, a jumping-off point. So let's say I've got this um, kind of just voice note that's just, like, some melodic stuff where it's, like, a rhythm, and then I'll scroll through my notes, and I'll say, okay, what fits here? Do I have anything that I've pre-written that can, you know, tack onto this? Or as I'm singing these stuff, because it's kind of just like vowel sounds, right? And you're doing like oohs and ahs or mms or whatever. Right. And then sometimes the words just shape themselves yeah. from that. Like I think naturally people know what sings well. That's why we hear the same words in the same songs over and over and over again, right? Yeah. There are certain words that just sing really nice and sound good that we want to hear, um, certain vowel shapes, and then there are ones that don't. Right. Um, and so even aside from like a relatability aspect, like just the actual sonics of it, like ooh and ah sounds nice. Right. Right. right yeah. Those kinds of things. Absolutely. Um, so I can kind of find the words from that. Um, and I don't try to overthink it. Now, when I'm rapping, like I always try to bring the metaphors, bring the bars, you know, that kind of stuff, internal rhymes and everything. Yeah. Um, but if I'm writing like something melodic, I just try to let it be what it wants to be. Yeah, Absolutely. I love that man. It's funny because for me, uh, I'm not a producer at all, mm -hmm. and um, you know, for me, I've always written first and yeah. taken stuff that's already been uh, produced. Yeah, you know, I mean, a lot of artists like will go on YouTube. J. Cole type beat, yeah, yeah. Logic type beat. J. Russ, Cole's doing that himself. Now. Exactly. <laughs> Yo, that was sick though. That was so cool. That was really cool that he did that. Um, and yeah, that's kind of my process where I'll just go from finding a beat that I in whatever mood I'm in mm -hmm. during that time whether it's in my session I'll feeling if I'm feeling a little sad I'll find something a little slower if I'm feeling like mm -hmm. oh, I want to like rip this you know I'm feeling gangster you know yeah, put on yeah. something like that and then go from there um yeah man um so then um so you're assigning something pre-written to these kind of beats right yeah I mean I'll actually I'll listen to the beat on on a loop mm -hmm. And if I feel, oh, this is this is hitting right now, yeah. then I'll start writing to it. Right, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's always that, f it's based off feeling for you then, right? Like you said, like, how am I feeling right now in this moment? Yeah. Let me go find a beat that reflects that. Yeah, and then if I need, like, a jumping off point, like you yeah. said, I'll go into my notes as well. Yeah. Um, out and about, I'll think about, like, some, some sort of line, and yeah. then I'll write it quickly into my notes. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm, like, having a hard time trying to get writing mm -hmm. then i'll be like all right let's look into the notes see what see yeah. what sticks have have a starting point and then right when i have that it starts to flow yeah i start to find that flow so that's a beautiful way to do it to start from like where you're actually at because a lot of people will come into the studio and they'll go i need the club record or i need the heartbreak mm -hmm. record or you know i need the the tiktok song and and you're maybe not even in that headspace right yeah are you, you know, are you turned up right now? Like, are you ready to make a club record? Or like, are you actually heartbroken right now? Is this gonna, and then you see, right? When you pick what you want to do first, it often doesn't work out. Yeah. And when you just go with the feeling and let it come out, that's when you get good stuff, in my opinion. Uh, absolutely, man. I feel like I've had to, I've had to figure it out personally myself where, um, what do I want to create and how do I want my sound to sound like? Mm -hmm. Um, because I feel like music is an expression of you, yeah. of, of yourself. Mm -hmm. And so the it's funny because I'll make a song that might be a little bit explicit. Yeah. Right? And then weeks or months after that it's released, I'll listen to it and sometimes I'll cringe. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh, I was in that space, but I'm not in that space right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And sometimes people will play and be like, oh, this is fire, man. And I'm like, oh, bro, it is fire. I like it, but <laughs> yeah. I was in a different headspace. Yeah. I was in a different zone. I was in a different mood, mm -hmm. right? So it's funny sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, I did say that, but I'm like... <laughs> That was little. That was at that time, that yeah. moment, right? No, I can relate to that a lot. I'll hear some of the stuff that I said in my in my older discography, and and I'm like, what was I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, whatever. The song's good, but like, I don't, I don't even know that I agree with that, that statement. That's anymore. right. That's yeah. right. It's funny how that how that changes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, man. That's that's uh, that that's something I've had I've had to I've had to work with especially when people are playing stuff from like four years ago or five years ago and I'm like mm -hmm. oh bro it's a little you know it's getting different. a little cringe, cringe i'm like kind of like tightening up and i'm like ah i don't know that's yeah. not me no more my sound's changed yeah yeah more yeah. more stuff's coming out soon you know and um, and you'll always be your own worst critic like i don't know if you get this but like when people tell me they like my old stuff 
I get this like knee jerk reaction to be like the new stuff's better. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean? yeah. Exactly. That's what I mean. To them, it might not be. They might like that song I did four years ago, and this new one that I dropped. It's not for them. Yeah. And and that is totally okay. But as an artist, you have this like um, desire to you know tell people like I'm growing, like I'm getting better. Yeah, like, yeah, cause, exactly. Because <laughs> you think of your old stuff as inferior, but it's only inferior to you. Yeah. It might be superior to to somebody who really likes it absolutely absolutely like for example i love a lot of logic's old shit mm -hmm. like i love his mixtapes yeah. like undeniable like you know you go back to like young sinatra yeah it's just pure rap and it's just like That's, skits and i like that era of him too the most yeah probably like his mixtapes to his debut album is like my favorite yeah my favorite chunk of his discography i like some of the new stuff but yeah. i really like that old stuff the, uh, yeah and it was just a different and i'm sure like he'll probably he'd probably say the same thing like mm -hmm. oh man that's just like it's not as good as like the new shit right but mm -hmm. yeah i think we i think as artists we kind of we're pretty hard on ourselves what do you think of um you know for me coming up in 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 music i found it as just an artist who who writes and raps i found it hard to you know especially with someone with limited resources mm -hmm. to get into the space of like writing or get into the space of creating like a song or a single sure. um you being in the space obviously mm -hmm. for for a long time too how do you feel like that potentially has changed or what do you think of artists who you know are trying to get into the game and um you know they they, they they don't have the resources they don't have the eight nine hundred dollar mic or the mm -hmm, setup mm -hmm. or they don't know how to produce or they don't know where to start like mm -hmm. i knew i found that a struggle and that's why it took me about four or five years before i even like dropped a single sure like my first song mm -hmm. just because i was figuring out how do i do this mm -hmm. um what are your thoughts on that i think that you should not be in a rush to start releasing but at the same time you should be okay with putting something out that you know you'll surpass um, so there's like a middle ground to it I think if you're in a space where you know you don't have access to a lot of resources um, and your stuff's coming out maybe not the way you want it to sound um, you know take your time and get it as good as you can but you have to get started at some point right mm -hmm. I'm a better producer now than I was in you know the 12th grade when I put my first mixtape out of course yeah but had I waited till now to ever release something or put something out I wouldn't have gone on that journey I wouldn't be you know I wouldn't have the skills that I have today because when you start releasing stuff you start putting pressure on yourself to evolve and to grow if you never drop anything there's no you know there's no baseline right yeah the first song I made let's say the mix isn't very good my vocal performance isn't good mm -hmm. um, the songwriting's not good yeah but that sets a baseline right and then I can be a little better and then I can be a little better and a little better and a little better and a little better until the point where now it's just subjective right my old stuff like my oldest original stuff is objectively bad but my new stuff compared to stuff from just a couple years ago or a few years ago the quality level has maintained right yeah i was making good stuff three years ago i don't like it as much as i like the new stuff but because you start you give yourself that baseline to build from um and you just have to be okay with that. Um, if if you never drop anything, there's no baseline, right? Right. You right. drop something and maybe it's really good. You spent years on it and years on it and it's good. And now that's your first step. Are you going to take another three years to do another song? Because you want to yeah. be that much better, yeah. right? So I prefer that incremental growth yeah. um, as opposed to, to playing the long game. But it's tough, right? A lot of people aren't in a situation to translate their ideas that they have in their head. Um, and I know the frustration so much, right? You hear the whole song complete in your head. It's this amazing record. It's going to be so good. And yeah. then, you know, you record it with whatever equipment you have, or maybe you save up and you go to the studio and you record it and it comes back out and you're like, oh, this sounds about 40% as good as I thought it was going right. to. Um, and you just have to keep going. Making songs is like learning an instrument. You're what you hear in your head, you're not going to be able to duplicate right away. Mm -hmm. and so you just have to, you know, make the songs. Yeah. And I think um, finishing them is super important. Even if you don't put it out, right. finish the song you're working on. It sounds like shit. 
keep it on your hard drive, make another one, but finish it. And that's so important. You have to learn how to finish the song, otherwise you never will. You'll start a thousand songs, you'll never finish one of them. Right. No, I love that, man. I, I execution mm-hmm. on a whole yeah, cuz yeah, I, I totally relate to that cuz I have I have so many verses that I have at home right now mm-hmm. that are just like one like 16 bars and that's it. Yeah. And it's like I wrote it at that time and I never got to completion. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I relate to that a lot. Yeah, and, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with kind of sketching or practicing or warming up, right? Um, but uh, if you want to be an artist who puts songs out, then you got to finish songs. You got to make songs, right? Yeah. You can't wait for the right song or the right record. You got to finish one and see. And I think that's where, you know, because music is a hobby for a lot of people. And a lot of people won't admit that that's all it is to them. Yeah. But if they never drop, then you can never say that they didn't do it. You know what I mean? Facts. I'm doing it. I'm working on it. It's coming. Big things coming. Yeah, that kind yeah. Of thing, right? <laughs> Big things coming five years later. Yeah. <laughs> Big things still coming. Mm-hmm. And I think people will hide behind that. Oh, it's not as good as I want it to be. Yeah. Well, you know, make another song then. Finish that one. Let it be done. Let it be not as good as you wanted and make the better song you have to trust yourself as an artist that you're going to be able to do do it again yeah yeah that's facts bro 